So when we get cracks in our base coat, our scratch coat, like here, we're not so concerned about them because the hair is there to hold it together. So long as you know that the plaster has bonded well to the substrate, to the background, then these aren't so much of an issue. It's always a good idea to knock them back whilst the plaster is, um, is soft enough, but this crack here, I'm not concerned about. And in the olden days, in the past, this first coat would be called the cracking coat. So the next phase now is we've left this base coat quite a long time. It's gone off nice and hard. Um, so what we have to do now is we have to control the suction. So for plasterers, suction is both your best friend and it's your worst enemy. Too much suction is going to take the life out of the plaster and it's going to be hard to work and it will shrink and crack really quite quickly. So with our nice hard scratch coat, we are now going to put the float coat on. But the key thing now is to make sure there's enough, uh, you haven't got too much suction. So what we're going to have to do is wet this wall down and we're going to have to make sure that we put enough water into that wall so that it doesn't suck the moisture out of the new plaster too quickly. So we're just going to give the wall a quick drink. And when you're working on site, it's always a, a bonus if you have a hose pipe with a nozzle like this. If I was doing this with a, with a pump, that would really take quite a long time. So I'm just going to wet the whole wall down. And you can see it's gone different colours. This is where, as we do our training courses, the uh, different mixes have been used. So that's what those different colours are. So you can see I'm being very generous with the water and often on jobs when we have very dry walls we will go the day before and start to water those walls down just to make sure that there is enough moisture in the wall to, so there's not too much uh, suction. That is the water that's been sucked into the plaster so you can see if I hadn't have wetted this wall down that would have happened to this plaster here and then of course it would have dried out too quickly and we would have had problems and probably we would have had some failure. So now the wall has been wetted down the next process is the simple process which is the plastering and often with lime plastering this is the easy bit. good lime plaster it wants to be quite stiff. The reason I'm making this stiff is that there's going to be less evaporation of water and therefore less shrinkage and less cracking. If I was to go over a ceiling say working above my head I would make this wetter because obviously it needs to be workable. If I'm going over laths where you see here then I might make it a little bit wetter as well so I'm making sure that I'm pushing the plaster through the laths. But if I'm going on to stonework or something solid, then I've got something hard to push against, so I'm going to make this a little bit stickier. Another good test of a lime plaster is you want to be able to turn your hawk upside down without the plaster or the mortar falling off. You see, that is a good plaster. It's not so soft that it's going to fall off and it's not so hard that it's going to fall off. So that's your range. So long as it will stick to the hawk when you turn it upside down, then you're okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to lay this on, onto my scratch coat. This is what we call the float coat. It's the second coat and it's the levelling out coat. So I've already done some float coating yesterday and we will show you how to float that back in a minute. But you can see, well, when you bring the camera closer, you'll see there's a thinner, fatter, thinner. So we've leveled it out slightly. 